So here at Chat Sports, I'm a really busy man covering the NBA, the NFL, as well as the San Francisco 49ers. And it's a real treat for me to be able to host this show, Golden State Warriors, today by Chat Sports. But the bosses are telling me that if we don't get to 26,000 subscribers with this video, we're going to shut the channel down. We've been pushing out multiple, vid multiple videos per week, bringing you the latest Warriors news and rumors. So if you want more coverage, we got to get to 26K. Hit that red subscribe button down below or in a separate browser. Go to youtube.com slash Warriors TV. Welcome in to Golden State Warriors today by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Jay Sr. We're hitting the latest Golden State Warriors trade rumors as we get closer and closer to the February 10th NBA trade deadline. And according to multiple reports out there, Golden State showing some interest in Jeremy Grant of the Detroit Pistons, who's one of the best two-way players in the NBA and one of the top NBA trade candidates going into the NBA trade deadline. Wozni Lombre was on the Bill Simmons podcast, and he had kind of just said this in passing that he has heard from some of his NBA sources that Golden State is among the many teams in the NBA showing some interest in Jeremy Grant. Bleacher Report also discussed the interest for JG in a recent report saying this, quote, if Golden State has any concerns about that trio, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, or worries with the supporting cast, it should cast a wide net in its search for potential upgrades. Even if the Warriors don't plan on splurging, they should at least know the market for stars in case the right player becomes available at the right price. Could Jeremy Grant be that player available for the right price. This is a guy who has really developed tremendously over the last several years. When he was drafted by the Philadelphia 76ers out of Syracuse, he was just looked at as an athlete who had a lot of potential, really was raw with his offensive game. But over the last couple of years, he's become much more than that. First six years, nine points per game, a tick under four rebounds, one assist, and only took around seven field goal attempts per night. But how about what he's done over the last two years with the Detroit Pistons? Now, he's currently out right now with a wrist-hand type of injury, but he's going to be back soon. And this is why he's become one of the most sought-after trade candidates in the NBA. Now, he's under contract for one more year, and he'll be a free agent after 2022-2023. But the last two years with the Detroit Pistons, after they gave him that bag, after he played really well in his final year with the Denver Nuggets, he's been very, very good. 22 points per game nearly, almost five rebounds, 17 field goal attempts per night almost, which really goes to show you the confidence he has in himself and the confidence that the Pistons organization has had in him for him to be one of their marquee offensive players. So we look at the numbers with what he's been able to do the last two years as compared to his first several seasons, his growth that has taken place. He's always been a very good defensive player because he's a really good athlete. I say all of that to ask you this, Dub Nation. What is your level of interest in Jeremy Grant? Scale it for me in the comment section from 1 to 10. 1 being not really interested at all. 10 being very, very confident. You let me know in the comment section right now. If a Warriors trade does happen, and I'm starting to believe that no trade is going to happen as we are just a couple weeks away from the NBA trade deadline, we'll have you covered here on Golden State Warriors today by Chat Sports. I am your host, Jay Senior. Thanks so much for making the show a part of your day. We're as I mentioned off the top, trying to get to 26,000 subscribers. Let's get there with this video. And if you want Warriors coverage that's entertaining, informative, consistent, fast, all year round, just hit that red subscribe button down below. One thing that I think has changed things over the last couple of weeks as far as the Warriors looking for roster upgrades is the development it's the continued growth. It's the overall play of Jonathan Kaminga, who has started some games when Draymond Green has been on the shelf, and he's come off the bench and has played very well as well. So last nine games for Kaminga, the number seven pick in the 2021 NBA draft, man, he's really been good on both ends of the floor. Highly, highly impressed with what he's been able to do as just an overall athlete. I don't think anybody expected this guy to burst onto the scene for a title contender and contribute like he's been contributing over the last nine games, 13 points per game, five rebounds. He's shooting almost 51% from the floor and from beyond the arc, 42% from three. Last year with the G League Ignite, another one of those players who is really just looked at and 
was scouted as an athlete with upside but positionless, which can be good, of course, but had to make a lot of strides offensively and defensively because he was such a raw player. But man, the highlights have certainly been there, especially against the Dallas Mavericks. End of the game, dotted the exclamation point, took that pass in transition, and just threw down that tomahawk slam, which had the chase center just going bonkers. And the bench from the Warriors players, they got up and they're like, yo, are you kidding me? Jonathan Kaminga able to throw down a dunk like that, that type of hyper-athleticism, it's just wild. I mean, the guy, you know, we drink beers nowadays that are IPAs with hops. That's what Jonathan Kaminga has. My man has some hops, but really his game is much more than that. He's really become a fine-tuned player. He gives his team so much defensively. And as we project forward, let's say Draymond Green has three to five elite years left. Well, Kaminga, if he continues on this trajectory, he could end up being that defensive presence like Draymond Green. And then offensively, I actually think he could be better than Draymond Green. So with us moving toward that NBA trade deadline, is Kaminga untouchable in a trade? Meaning nobody can offer anything for Kaminga and the Warriors cannot put him in to any trade discussions. I want you to sound off and let me know for the young king. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Warriors today presented to you by our sportsbook partner, BetUS. NFL playoffs are moving forward, and I've really had a great joy in betting in some of these NFL playoff games, and I've been able to win a lot of money by just going to chatsports.com slash bet and enter the promo code chat125. To start the year, I put in $100, and with that link in that promo code, I got an additional $125 back, $225 to game with. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I am the host of the San Francisco 49ers Report by Chat Sports. We just surpassed 50, uh, 53,000 subscribers, youtube.com slash 49ers TV. So I'm going to be going live for a watch party for Niners, Rams, NFC Championship game, and I am going to be taking San Francisco as three and a half point underdogs using that link and that promo code. If you don't use that, then that deal doesn't apply. Make sure you hop on that deal right now. As for Kaminga, man, we talk about the continued growth. How about from three-point distance? Since the start of December, he is 18 of 44 from long range. That's good for 41%. Look, he didn't shoot the ball well at all with the G League. In the summer league, he really was okay, really just up and down. But we're looking at now almost a two-month sample size of him, the Rook, the Young King, some call him the Cum Bucket, shooting 41% from beyond the arc. Now, Steve Kerr was asked about his development, and he said this quote, one of the reasons we've brought him along slowly is he's got to learn those things before we can really trust him to play big minutes. In my mind, it's a really organic, natural way to bring a young player along rather than just give him minutes. He's got to earn them by making plays and making the right reads, and that's why he's getting consistent minutes right now without Draymond Green. I'm interested to see what happens with Kaminga, once Draymond Green comes back, still real no timeline as far as when the best player defensively in the NBA is going to return to the lineup. Something to, of course, monitor, to, to monitor as we move forward. Also something that we're continuing to monitor, the health of Klay Thompson and the play of Klay Thompson. That win, dominant win against the Mavericks, I might add, against one of the hottest teams in the NBA, was the best game that Klay Thompson has played since he came off the injury. Now, there were some concerns about that knee soreness because he tweaked that injured knee back a couple days ago, sat out a game, but then came back against the Mavericks and was really, really good. One sign of uh, growth and one important nugget, he played 26 minutes. So the minutes restriction starting to climb a little bit for Klay Thompson as he gets his legs back underneath him. 15 points, 6 of 12 field goals, 3 of 5 from long range. Very good sign for Klay Thompson as he continues to get healthy. We just had to add that on on the back end because him healthy really adds to the equation if the Warriors want to compete for an NBA championship. In the games that he's played and what you've seen from Klay Thompson since he's come back, how would you grade him? A, B, C, D, or F has to be around a B. I mean, the guy missed two years with a torn ACL and torn Achilles. You voice your comments into the comment section because we're all about the audience interaction here at Chat Sports. Thanks for watching today's show. Don't forget to subscribe.